talk boxing now on Highland Sports, and I'm delighted to say uh, joining me this evening is, of course, Donegal professional middleweight Brett McGinty, and also his trainer, former world champion Mr. Ricky Hatton. Gentlemen, you're welcome to to Highland Sport. I saw you. Uh, Brett, I'm sure you'll not mind if we spoke to you several yeah, occasions before. We, we might we might maybe uh, speak to Ricky uh, first of all, if if that's okay with you, Brett. Uh, let's make every looking. I've been looking forward to this all day, Ricky, um, to get talking to you and, and talk about your work with, with Brett. Uh, I suppose if we go back to when you first met uh, Brett McGinty, what did you see in Brett as a, as a boxer? What what stood out for you, Ricky? Uh, well, to be honest, stylistically, right up Ricky Hatton Street, do you know what I mean? He had a uh, fantastic amateur pedigree, you know, with, uh, you know, national titles and multi-nation um, championships that he'd, that he'd won. Nine times out of ten when you've got um, such a, um, um, you know, a, 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 a cabinet full of trophies from the amateurs like that, they tend to not have the style what Brett's got. And he had a very typical pro style. He used to come in, you know, slipping and sliding, bobbing and weaving, you know what I mean? You know, body, good body puncher, you know, good, uh, good television attacking style. Uh, I'd like to say, and you think to yourself, you know, when you're um, as aggressive as 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 Brett's style was, you know, uh, he didn't look like he'd have the type the, the type of style which won all them titles he did. But uh, what I've learned since working with him is the reason why he has that aggressive style and he's won all them titles that there's a lot more to him than than just that bullet gate attacking style, and that's what. Uh, that's what I know he's got in his arsenal, and that's what we're trying to bring out bit by bit as we were as we're working in the gym. Yeah, obviously you you watched him as he trained and prepared for that first professional bout. What did you take out of that bout um, about Brett, and what are you going looking for him rather to to bring in now to to the second fight of his pro career, Ricky? Well, it, it couldn't have gone, you know, and it was no one's no one's fault. Sometimes it, it happens, and bearing in mind. Um, the, the COVID situation, we had two opponents pulled out and it was, uh, the, this is the opponent, you know, you, 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 you unfortunately, you've got to take it or you leave it. And he, he was, um, I think he was, he was a lot, lot bigger opponent. Do you know what I mean? A lot, lot more uh, experience, short notice, you know, so, uh, and, you know, and I wasn't, I wasn't keen for the fight, to, to be honest, at first. I mean, I, I had seen um, Brett, uh, spar with him and you handled him really, really well. But I mean, um, ultimately, you put take the head guard off, you put them little gloves on, and it's it's different. But um, I accepted the fight because I knew Brett would win it. You know, I knew he, you know what he's capable of and everything. But uh, it was probably a, a too probably a harder debut than I'd, um, as his trainer I'd have liked for him. But ultimately, he come through the fight. He won. He impressed, and. Um, the boxes he ticked where he showed his determination, his heart, his, his stamina, his chin. Normally, you start ticking them boxes off after fights seven, eight, and nine, and he's already done it in his debut. So, uh, you know, of how highly a high regard I held um, Brett for before his debut, I hold him in even higher regard now. It's for it's our job to, uh, you know, to 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 take things slowly, if you like. But we it was unfortunately that was no one's fault. It just was what it was that day, and uh, we got away with it. And he took them uh, them knocks, and he's learnt from them. What boxes do you want Brett to take now in the second fight, Ricky? I'm sorry? What boxes do you want Brett to now take in the second fight? I think just a little bit more patience, do you know what I mean? A little bit more, you know, uh, just a little bit more cautious. Throw your jab, you know what I mean? At the end of the day, you know, you can all we can all get caught with one punch, and that's what he did. You know, he was well on top. He got caught with one punch, but you know, uh, just to just to stay just to stay focused. You know, to keep you to keep your shape. Sometimes even when you're you're on top so much, like Brett was, it only takes one punch to turn a fight, and that's what uh, we've been working on in the gym. You know, we throw our combinations, we land our punches. We, we move our head in case that counter comes, you know what I mean? We jab as we go in, we throw our combinations and we finish on a jab. You little, little stuff like like that because these journeymen, they don't try and match you and go toe-to-toe -to -toe, you match your punch to punch. They try and get lucky, you know, and um, the lad got lucky in that fourth round with that one punch and uh, hopefully we, we don't want to see that again, do we, Brett? <laughs> well, Brett, 
we'll, we'll go to you now, Brett. And uh, obviously, the first one under the belt, which is a which is a huge thing to to get you up and running. Your preparation was very much disrupted with that, given the circumstances with COVID. What's preparations been like for you now ahead of the second one? Been very good, Oshin. Um, everything's going to plan. Um, we've been working on a lot of things, as as I say, and as Ricky always says to me, like it's not about this fight or the next fight. It's about two, three years down the line, and building um, as we go along slowly. Um, but it's it's all well and good doing the things in the gym every day. It's it's up to me then to implement them in the ring because you know that's how I'm going to better myself. That's how I'm going to improve as a fighter. So. You know, all the things we've been learning and working on in the gym, it's up to me now to, to, to carry into the ring with me on fight night and to um and to, to use them against my opponent because you know each each thing um strengthens strengthens my, my arsenal, you know, my boxing. So um it's up to me to to, to implement them and to, to make them work on fight night. Are you a bit more relaxed maybe this time around, Brett? I would say so, actually, you know, it's just you know, you always have them pro debut nerves hanging over you, you know, obviously coming up to your pro debut. And I also had an, an activity of nearly two years. So I had my last amateur fight in February 2019. And then I had I didn't have my pro debut to, to December 2020. So it was a very, very long layoff. I had that in my mind. I had the fact that it was my pro debut and there was a lot of, you know, I just signed with, with my Kennedy a couple of days before. So I had, you know, that kind of, Hype hanging over me, so you know, there was a bit of pressure on me to be honest, and I did feel it. And I ended up being in a six rounder against a, a tricky opponent. So, um, you know, th- this one's a bit, it can be a bit more relaxed, but at the end of the day, I have you know, I have a job to do, and it's up to me to make sure that I do that. You know, take the box, move on, and, and keep building for the future. Yeah, your opponent uh, for the fight is Jordan Granham. Uh, you were due to fight Josh Hodgkins, but that has been changed in, in the last couple of days. One thing about Granham is he's a very, very experienced journeyman. He does have a lot of losses uh, under his under his name. Uh, he's actually lost out to Sam Egerton, who's going to headline the ball involved in, in, in Coventry. But um, just going to you, Ricky, is this a better opponent, is it, at this stage for Brett? It is, yeah, because obviously, for one, he's at he's at the proper weight division, <laughs> which always helps. But, but no, um, you know, at the end of the day, you know, you, when you go through your pro career, that was a tougher fight than what we needed for the debut. But we got away from it. We learned from it. It had done Brett absolutely no harm whatsoever. He most certainly knows what the professional game is is all about now. But you know, you have them one of the mill journeymen where they, you know they'll have twenty wins and fifty you know, and, and 50 losses or they'll have 15 wins and 60 losses. And, you know, and it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. They, they, they're, they're like, they're all pretty much the same run of the mill. But the thing is in about 80 fights or 85 fights, this fellow has only been stopped once retired in his last, in his last fight out of about 85, you know what I mean? So, you know, that is, even though the record doesn't look good for, for this stage of Brett's career, that is a decent opponent. You know what I mean? And you've got to, that's the way you've got to, got to look at it. You know, we could have an opponent who would have a, you know, you know, 20 wins, you know, you could have had like, you know, 20 wins and 40 defeats, but 20 of them, uh, you know, you know, 40 of them defeats, he could have got knocked out 30 times. So even though he's got a better, better record in theory, it's not as good a test. This is a perfect test for um, Brett's um, second fight to put, um, Probably the, the the mistakes or you know the, the, the some things that he, he did in the first fight he can go and show people a little bit more what a little bit more what he's got in the tank and what he's got in his arsenal I guess yeah yeah you of course had a had a lengthy successful career in the ring and, and now you're a coach and, and you're a trainer uh, you of course were under under Billy Graham uh, what has changed you now in the coaching and the training capacity compared to what you were as as, as a fighter Ricky and what do you bring that to the ring and, and when you're training the likes of Brett? Well, I think what helps from, from me with uh, in training Brett, he's got a very um, uh, Ricky Hatton S style, if you like. He comes forward, he body punches, he's attacking. He's got a real, you know, um, attractive TV style type of um, type of style. Um, and because he goes for the knockout, and because he's so aggressive, um, I think he's got probably a decent coach in me in the sense of because I was too aggressive in my career um, I work a lot on defence now I look a lot on catching shots and sliding shots because I didn't do enough of it in my career 
And I think because I didn't do enough of it when I was training, that's what makes me overcompensate a little bit when, as I'm doing my um, my training. Because if you remember, when I first started my career, I used to get cut every single fight because I was just too aggressive. And, you know, what I've learned is, you know, just to relax a little bit more, jab as you go in, a few more fights, bend your, then bend your knees a little bit more. And then I stopped getting cut and I started winning fights a lot, lot more comfortable. And that's what... What the mistakes I made early on in my career, you know, I'm, I'm passing it on to Brett so he doesn't do the same, if you like. So I think the fact that my defence was a little bit weak, it's made me more, it's made me concentrate more on it, more on the defence as a trainer, I guess, yeah. Yeah. At this stage in, in Brett's young career, um, he's very, very eager. You have to learn how to be patient, as you as you mentioned earlier. And a lot of these young guys would like to go for the knockout and go for the, for the KO one. But at this stage of a young fighter's career, is it maybe more beneficial to see out the rounds, one by points, to go the four, to, to, to go the six, and then you step up to eight, Ricky? Um yes and no, to be honest with you. I um I mean if if you if you've got a, a, a fighter's instinct, you know, when you go for the knockout, then what have you got? I mean, you know, ultimately, the time will come when he steps up in class where he will get the rounds out. Do you know what I mean? At this stage of his career, I'm not concerned about rounds because he's only got bout number two coming up. But one thing I'm concerned in is, as he's attacking, how he's attacking. You know, I want him to go in, you know, fainting and dropping, throwing his jab a little bit more, bending his knees. You know, if the big one isn't there, don't wing it, don't we mentioned in the gym, haven't we, Brett? If the big ones that are there, just show a little bit more patience and don't show it. I mean, and if he knocks them out, but as long as he's showing that little bit of patience, that little bit of, uh, you know, that you know that little bit, he's just got to tweak things a little bit, still go for the knockout, because that's, that's why fans are going to love him. But it's just how he goes about that, getting that knockout is, is what is more important to me than the rounds at the minute. Just got to show a little bit more subtlety. In, in, in his attacking and as long as he shows that for me the rounds will come yeah uh, Brett we'll bring you back in uh, what sort of influence has, has Ricky been on you uh, it's been brilliant Oshin. Um I, I'm learning every day in the gym um, every day every day in the, in, in the Haddon's gym like is a, is a learning day for me um, so it's up as I said like it's up to me now to, to bring to bring everything I'm learning and do it in the ring because you know, it's one thing doing it in uh, doing it in the gym every day, but the important thing is they they bring it in the ring with you because I know these things will improve me. You know, it'll make me a better fighter. It'll make me a better all round fighter, and it'll um it'll get me uh it'll progress me through the levels as well. So, um, I'm learning every single day. Uh, as I say, I'm all, I'm only a novice in the pro ranks. I'm, you know, it's all it's practically all new to me. I've loads of amateur experience but it's a complete different game so it's up to me now to um to take it all in to learn these things as i'm going along and most importantly to to implement them in fight night and come the 22nd i would like to think i'm going to be you know i'm going to look and look good in, in my performance and and bring the things that i've learned and uh and do them on, on fight night see, see at this stage of brett's career we all you know you're going to have speed bumps that's what learning is but if you can have the speed bumps, come through it, take it on board, use it to your strengths, you know what I mean? That's how you become a champion. If you get the speed bumps and you crumble under them, then you're not going to make a champion. We've all, you know, whether it be Brett McGinty, Ricky Atten, or Floyd Mayweather, at this stage of your career, these are where the speed bumps come, these are where the problems are caused and everything like that. And you've got to show the character to take it on board, go to the gym, put it right and improve in every fight. And that's how champions are made. And he'll do that. He'll do that exactly. Yeah, what is the potential of Brett, McGrin Brett McGinty in your eyes, um, Ricky? How, how far can he go here? Well, you look at how well he's done in an amateur career with a, a, a very professional style. Normally, when you've got a style like Brett McGinty, who's throwing body shots and attacking and going for the knockout, we have a picture in our head of amateur boxers, which is a little bit, you know, a bit of fencing and a little bit in and out and fast loads of fast combinations and stuff like that. And that's not what Brett's got. So he's He's done, he's achieved all them amateur um, amateur titles, you know, uh, with, a, with a professional style, which shows that he's not, just an, he's not just an attacking fighter. He's got more in his armory, and that's what I've noticed, you know, in the gym. There's a lot more to Brett than just coming forward, going for the knockout and attacking the body shots and give him time and give him more work together. That's what he's going to show out. But there's no reason why, I, I, if I was Brett, I, I would, you, you've got to try 
reach for the stars. You've got to be thinking world titles. If you haven't got that ambition and you're not thinking world titles, you're in the wrong game. You've got to be in the game and you've got to reach for the very, very top. And if for some reason you don't get there, you know, you can look at yourself in the mirror and say, tell you what, it won't, won't for the want of trying. But there's no, no reason why he should be looking anything other than world title. You know what I mean? Yeah, uh, how often do we expect to see him in the ring this year, uh, Ricky? Obviously, we'll get through the, the the 22nd of May. Will there be many more fights for the rest of the year to come? Do you yeah. guys want to get him on as often as possible? Absolutely. Well, Mick Hennessy, you know, his promoter has, has just has said that his next fight will probably be uh, in July. So then he can have a little bit of time off with the family, go back to Ireland, spend time with the family and the friends, you know, and his, his mates and that. And then maybe, you know, I, I would like to think, you know, Come July, maybe maybe another two, three before the end of the year. McKenzie wants to keep him on Channel Five. He wants to keep the fans seeing him, seeing him improve. And that's the reason why at this young stage, you know, by the more fights, more fights the better. The more yeah. fights the better at this stage because at the minute, it's not about being in wars. It's about learning. So the more fights the better for for, for me at the minute. And I think uh, if he can get another, he can have this, this one, and then another three before the end of the year bearing in mind we've been in a covid uh year you know and it's been a bad situation i think that i think brett couldn't have hoped for any better for his first year and mick hennessy would have done a good job very good yeah i was listening to mick hennessy uh, earlier on in, in the press conference ricky and he was talking so passionately about brett and and yourself and, and the relationship he's having about this this tv style and about how exciting this journey is, is is going to be. Are you excited about it just as much as Mick Hennessy, Ricky? Very much so. And I'm excited for Irish boxing because, I mean, we've had, you know, great champions through the years, you know, with Ireland. And it's nice to see the pedigree. He's got, um, you know, he's, he's got he's got two or three, three or four, you know, under under his stable. And he's, uh, his plan is to build them up like we're doing with Brett at the minute, build them up, build them up, slowly, slowly, and then fighting for you know, for Irish titles or European titles and doing them in Ireland. I know Brett was nothing he would love better than to top the bill in his his hometown. And um, that's a very, very distinct popularity. But it's slowly, slowly at the time. Do it in stages. But it's very, very exciting time for Brett and all the, the Irish the Irish lads because uh, Mick Hennessy has uh, got a vision of that's what he wants to do. He wants to take these lads to Ireland Topping the bills in the hometowns and stuff like that, so it's very exciting times. And I think with the quality he's got in his stable, you know the the champions, the world champions that we've had that have recently just passed, you know, just hung them up like Kyle Frampton. I think we've got the conveyor belt coming right behind him. These guys, I really do. Yeah, you'll be looking forward to that bringing it home, Brett. Definitely, Eugene. I would say the chances of of getting a fight in St Johnson are slim, but <laughs> in, anywhere near wild they be. You'll have to take Ricky to St. Johnston and Carrigan's with you. Well, uh, spend the weekend. Sure. <laughs> spend the weekend. Uh, listen, it's it's all very exciting to look to look forward to your career, Brett. But but the next stage is on May twenty second in Coventry, and we wish you all all the best in, in that fight. And I'm sure we'll be talking again uh, after it as well. Uh, Brett McGinty and Ricky Hatton. It was great to talk to you. Thank you very much for joining Thanks us on Radio Sport. And the best Thanks of luck for the next fight in the coming months. Appreciate Cheers, it. Thank, thank you. you.